Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Patrick's Parish. Advent confessions begin Monday, November 27th from 6 to 7 p.m. in the church and will continue each Monday through December 18th. Please see the bulletin for more details. The giving tree is coming soon. Please return all the tags by December 17th to help those in need. Finally, the Feast of the Immaculate Conception of Mary, a holy day of obligation, will be on Friday, December 8th. Masses will take place at 8 a.m. and 7 p.m. that day. Let us begin our prayer this morning by singing hymn number 3, Crown Him with Many Crowns, 733. Good morning, everyone. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. My brothers and sisters, as we join together on this solemnity of Christ the King, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus. You seek out the lost and bring them back. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you heal the sick and feed the hungry. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Savior of the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation set free from slavery may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will look after and tend my sheep. As a shepherd tends his flock, when he finds himself among his scattered sheep, so will I tend my sheep. I will rescue them from every place where they were scattered when it was cloudy and dark. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will give them rest, says the Lord God. The lost I will seek out, the strayed I will bring back, the injured I will bind up, the sick I will heal, but the sleek and strong I will destroy, shepherding them rightly. As for you, my sheep, says the Lord God, I will judge between one sheep and another, between rams and goats. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life. But each one in proper order, Christ the first fruits. Then, at his coming, those who belong to Christ. 
Then comes the end. When he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power, for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. When everything is subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to the one who subjected everything to him, so that God may be all in all. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. With your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all his angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne and all the nations will be assembled before him. And he will separate them one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. A stranger, and you welcomed me. Naked, and you clothed me. Ill, and you cared for me in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you were cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then, they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or ill, or in prison, and not minister to your needs? He will answer them, Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for one of the least ones of mine, you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. This weekend marks the end of the liturgical year, and we celebrate this last weekend with the solemnity of our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the universe. Today, we are given a preview of what we will face 
at the end of time. In the gospel, Jesus confides to his disciples how he will pass judgment on all of us. The scene of the last judgment is both sobering and surprising. It is a scene of splendor and majesty, a scene of separation of the righteous from the unrighteous, a scene of reward and punishment. It's sobering because we get the sense that there is no way of escaping from it. All people will be brought before the glorious throne of Christ for judgment and sentencing. What is surprising is a reason given for the judgment. It is not the accomplishment of some phenomenal feat. Rather, people are judged on whether or not they met the basic needs of others. When it comes time for the final judgment, there are no do-overs. We are either ready to enter God's kingdom or we are not. And what is a measure of readiness? It is to perform the corporal works of mercy from our hearts with pure motive and without self-flattery or the desire to attain favor from someone. If we look back on this entire year, Jesus has been calling us to discipleship. He has taught us to be poor in spirit, to love our enemies, to carry our cross, to forgive others 77 times, to love God with all our being, to love our neighbor as ourselves, to humble ourselves, to always be ready for his coming in glory, to be good and faithful servants, and to make disciples of all nations. The kingdom of God is an exclusive kingdom. Criteria for membership is based on the bonds that unite all of us, one another, together. And these bonds are love and concern and bonds that reach deep, deep into the human heart. Our assistance should be given whenever and wherever there is need. And it is given in ordinary acts like giving food and drink, shelter and clothing, or spending time with someone who might be lonely or afraid. It's patiently waiting for an elderly person or in thanking people for their service. What we do for others, we do for Christ because Christ is identified with those in need. We seldom see, though, the face of the glorified Christ in the faces of the needy. It's more often a face of a disfigured Christ that is turned to us. But we see his fear, his shame, his brokenness, and his sense of loss. And it's very difficult to look into such eyes, and that might even turn us away from them. But these are precisely the ones with whom Christ is identified. He looks out to us through those eyes. It is his hand that reaches out for our assistance. He is the one who tests our patience and our generosity. The kingdom of God will be established brick by brick through our simple acts of kindness. It is not a kingdom of the strong, though, but of the weak, a kingdom of love and of care. If this is the kingdom we establish during our own lifetime, this will be the kingdom into which we will be welcomed at the end. Let us stand now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, 
Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Holy Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Lifting our hearts and minds before the Lord, let us offer all of our prayers to him on the solemnity of Christ the King. That wealthy nations seek practical ways to relieve the crushing debt of poor countries, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the hungry be fed, the homeless find haven, the lonely be comforted, and those in prison know true freedom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the members of this community of faith be to one another a source of strength and trial, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are sick or near death, and those who care for them, Know the reality of God's love through the community's support. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those friends and loved ones who have gone on before us, especially for Leon and Irene LaMarche, whom we will remember in this liturgy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the intentions of our parish prayer chain, and for all those prayers that we hold in the corners of our own hearts that are known to God alone, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we place our hearts before you this day on the solemnity of Christ the King, that we may draw our, be drawn into the merciful gift of your love, grace, and mercy at work within our lives, so that we may enter into your eternal kingdom. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. As our gifts are brought to the altar, let us join together in singing hymn number 627, Whatsoever You Do, 627.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good laws of the Holy Church. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gift of unity and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, that you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as eternal priest and king of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption, and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise. Or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls, in the hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God living in truth, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius Cyprian, Lawrence Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace. Command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. 
on the day before he was to suffer. He took bread in his holy and venerable hands. With eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, as Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and to confess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also your servants, who though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us we beseech you into their company not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit, let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Now for the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorifying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My friends, as you might have noticed, uh, we have four weeks until Christmas. Okay, maybe you didn't notice that, but I did. Uh, so as such, uh, we will start uh, Monday night confessions for Advent starting this Monday and going all the way through December 18th. It usually be a little longer, but unfortunately, uh, the following week is going to be December 25th. So, with that in mind, we'll have the next four weeks, the next four Mondays for time of uh, confession if you want to come on Monday night as opposed to Saturday. They're both going to be running, so whatever works best for you as we prepare for that celebration of our Lord's coming at Christmas. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Have a great week, everyone. As we go forth together, let us sing hymn number 209. Come ye thankful people, come. Number 209. Thank you.